danceable. So you're very close to having that dance tempo right there. I usually consider dance, to, like, I usually think like performance tempo for a fiddle tune is between uh, 104 and 112 and dance tempo probably is a little higher maybe depending on where it, it's regional specific but 120 beats a minute. Those people down in the Ozarks dance at a ridiculous like 135 beats a minute or something. They almost can't keep track of where the tune is but, but they like it fast. <clears throat> but uh, talk to Dinah a couple times just to see where you are. You just learned that right? I'm gonna try to see if we can play through it. I might, I probably might play it. I probably play it pretty similar to Liz. We could just try it slow and see what happens. Just kind of reinforce what you just got there. Okay. Remember how it goes? It goes. That sounded good. Wow, a lot of it, I heard a lot of it coming back just right on the money, so that's fantastic. After one go, that's not really all that easy a tune to play. Uh, this is one of those tunes where it's a good time to say something about you playing unisons. In other words, playing an open string and a note below that's the same. Almost without exception, uh, and I say almost without exception, there are some places where it's just not convenient, but if you're playing a held open string, it's nice to double it up because you know a held open string sounds just kind of thin, you know. Because you can't do anything. It's got no uh, uh, difference in tone. You can't play with the with your finger vibrato. Nothing. So if, if when there's an open string, I like to play this doubled up. Try that. Just find that. Find the A with your fourth finger on the D string. Play that. Now do the same thing on the E. Uh -huh. and, and actually to me, it's sometimes not in tune, but I, call, I, I treat that as an advantage. It makes it sound edgy, you know? <laughs> so so let, let me just play you for what I'd do on that tune, just, just to give you an idea. So anyway, just keep that in the back of your mind and especially like on waltzes, but even on hoedowns where you have an, anytime you have an eighth note, almost that's a held, that's an open string, you should try to double it up. You wouldn't on, you know, run a 16th notes, but anytime there's like an eighth note, you can double it up. So, well, and as we get opportunities present itself, I'll remind you about trying to think about doing that. And there's something you can do to practice that too. Like say, usually when you go to that open string, you're coming from a note below, like, So what I do is I practice, you can practice these little things like, like for, for the A, for instance, start on the F sharp and just go. Get your fingers used to, try doing that. Get, find the F sharp on the D string, the second finger. And then play that, play this, this chord, play this chord. F sharp and open A, and now find the unison. Same thing with the E. I'm using the E on the 
D string. Play, play the E on the D string. Play the, play the E on the D string. I'm still on A and E. Or D and E. D and A, sorry. So what you can do as a little exercise, you can do this, you know. So I'm doing F sharp A, E, A. F sharp A. And if you're bold, you can throw in the third finger, do, do from G sharp to A. I'm playing G sharp on the D string. Find that note. Now put the A, the four figure in front of it. I'll show you where I use that on that talk to Dinah when we get to this part where it goes. to get that down. It took me about 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so now uh, you can do the same thing. I'll just show you. You don't have to do it, but I'll show you. You can do the same thing on, with the E. So you, sometimes you'd use the E for that. Same thing, you know, I'm doing, now I'm doing C sharp E, B E. And then on D, same thing, I could use go B to D. Like if I was playing Arkansas Traveler, you know, instead of going, like, if I played it uh, without that, it'd be like this. But now I've got...